And welcome back to the live coding video series with where we are doing FizzBuzz by TVD. Excellent. Uh, as the we've done in the first two videos, we've completed the first requirement, which ended up being this line here on line 88. And we've completed the second requirement here on line 86. So now we're able to move on to the third requirement. What And as a refresher, that third requirement is when we're given a number that is a multiple of five, return a buzz. Now we can see this is very, very similar to our second requirement. Only difference is the number three and the word buzz. So I, I can see kind of similar where some, some similarities in the code we have might be. Do you think it's safe to just duplicate this? And update the code and go, well, you know, that's what the requirement says. Worked for three, it went out for five. We have no test now, though. So while we may recognize this, another person coming in and accidentally typos, we won't know anything changed. We won't know anything broke. Everything is still passing. So while our tests are tools to drive towards a general a simple general solution, or simpler than just writing code would be, but a, to drive us towards a general solution, they are also a safety net to ensure that the, in the future that behavior doesn't change. And we wouldn't have that if we just wrote the code. Now, so we want to leave it so that we have to write the code to drive that behavior in, into existence, uh, which is really where test-driven development comes from. It is the idea that we are going to drive implementation details by test. So I will duplicate my test. Get everything back in the screen as I like it. Now again, so what I want to do is I want to make sure when I'm given a multiple of five that I get back buzz. And once I have my test internals updated, I will rename my method. <clears throat> and as I want to see this fail, I'm going to verify that it's failing for the correct reason. I and I didn't predict this one. I was a little getting a little ahead of myself, but I expect it to return the string five instead of the string buzz, which it does. So without modifying any of the existing behavior, I know what I'm asked what I'm providing it. And I no longer call it input, so I better uh, get back to my right name. And I'm going to return what it expects. And with that, the tests pass. So fantastic. OK, now we're, we're passing. I can look at refactoring. Do I see any patterns? No, not really. Do I see anything I want to clean up? Yeah, not really. E Sharp was giving us a suggestion that we can combine things with a syntactic sugar here. Now I love the name of this, or one of the notes. That's not what I want to do. I just I'm just gonna do this. I love one of the names of this. There are, there are a few names, but this right here, where the question mark colon, it's called an Elvis operator. That's my favorite name for it. Um, you can go look it up why it's called that, but the Elvis operator is one of my favorite operators in in, uh, in C sharp. But that's not what we're doing right now. We are getting back on track of refactoring. I don't see any patterns. I'm following a, a, I'm following a pattern in my testing, so I'm OK with where everything's at. I've already renamed this. I'm OK with the namespace. So not, uh, not a lot of the rest of the system that needs to be refactored. So we can move on to another test. And <clears throat> so we need. Another multiple of 10, multiple of 5, because I'm still going to buzz, so I don't need to change that. And here, I can, I mean, I can use my tool, or I can just hit buttons really fast. <coughs> so we fail. And in this case, predictably, or predictively, I'm going to say we the, the actual is 10, and we expected buzz. And let's look at this. So actual 10, and we expected buzz. So fantastic. It is failing for the reason I expect. So now that I can I can write that I know what it's giving us 
and I know what it wants back. And I think FizzBuzz is a very simple example of that. And in future videos, we'll get into more comp slightly, not terribly more complex situations that demonstrate uh, how we can do this prediction uh, or how we can do this what I'm given and what I expect back kind of testing to help us to help us get our test passing very quickly. So I was playing with my microphone a little bit. Totally wasn't helping. Um, playing with it a little more. Probably not helping much. But whatever. These things go on. Okay. So, <clears throat> but I see a pattern now. I have the same pattern as I saw before. So I can start to write some code. Ideally, it would pop in the screen at the right time where I use my knowledge of the requirement. That is not at all right. Using my knowledge of the requirement that we are looking for multiples of five. I know mathematically if the divisible by five and the remainder of zero means it's a multiple of five. Uh, so I can use this modulus operator. One of the risks of this code, as I clean it up, is how readable is this for people who don't know what the modulus operator is? I would argue almost not. It's almost unreadable. It's indecipherable. They have to go look up things. It doesn't make sense. The code doesn't help them in their understanding of it. And this is something that, so this really violates readability. Uh, but I also see a pattern here. So if we get our input, I'm just going to call this input again. It's how I'm referring to it, and I want to keep my references the same as the code. If our input is divisible by one of these numbers, it returns one of these results. It's a, the only difference here is this number, and uh, that's Alt-Shift to select a column, and this string here. Those are the only pieces of these two lines that are different. So clearly, like, like we had before, we have a pattern. And we want to refactor patterns. So the biggest part of this, so what I'm going to do, when we want to restract, extract a method, which is a safe refactor and one of how we can, one of the ways we can combine this kind of functionality. Um, this is my uh, uh, multiple of value. And this is going to be my, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, it's putting it inside the if instead of outside of it. Um, this is my result value. And I'm going to just go ahead and cut this out. <clears throat> ah, that's why I didn't do that. That's why I don't do that. Um, so I think about this. Now, now, how can I make this a method? Well, I kind of want to make this a method. And let's just see how this behaves. Let's go and extract this as a method. And, and I'll show you why I realize I don't want to do this. So I have this S here, that's an out parameter, and the return type, what is the return type, what is it going to do? So basically it's saying, if this method returns true, then return the value I give you back. Uh, we look at this, it actually didn't even do it correctly. Out, we never want to use out. That, that, that means uh, whatever we're trying to do is probably not the correct step. So because I realized where I messed up, we don't want to do buzz, I'm going to shift back to just doing input and multiple of. I'm going to extract a method here. Um, and it's just, is it a multiple of? Input, multiple of. And because I actually don't need this variable, I'm going to re-inline that. And that's part of the flow of this. We want to extract the, pull out the custom types, otherwise it names things funny. And now we have a method here is multiple of, which is the same as this. So we can add this for three. And now we have refactored commonality. Now, things are still really similar. 
we've reduced what this does. We've made it more readable. So now if is multiple of input three, doesn't quite read like English. There are ways we can fix that in the future. <coughs> and they're going to return this value. So the complexity of how we determine if something's a multiple of another number has been abstracted away. We, we've hidden this. We don't have to worry about that now. And we understand what we are attempting to do. So this is the value of extracting even little bits into new methods is that we see how that how they are we we can name them in a way that clarifies what they do we can make them effectively named this is what we look for with the four rules of simple design once our code is working the first thing we want to do is effectively name things naming is hard but naming is important it's worth pulling out the pieces that we have to think about like what is this and why does zero matter into methods that tell us it's a multiple of those numbers. Um, and we can name this from input. Um, the modulus operator probably has actual terms uh, applied to it, which I am actually Googling at the moment on my phone. Ooh, modulo. Uh, because I'm kind of a geek about these things, which may shock everybody else. Um, so it's a division. And I'm going to. So looking at the uh, formal names of the operands for division, because it's really just a division op operation, and it gives us the. Uh, remainder this is actually called the dividend and this is the divisor does that help clarity I don't know I'm a geek I like the correct terms I actually uh, one of the few comments in one of the codes code bases I've worked in is that um, on our addition stuff where I actually use augend and add end uh, is the comment that Quinn is a geek. So I, I, don't know, I like using the formal terms. Uh, I'm not sure if it's helpful or not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's helpful or not in this case. Uh, because we're really trying to, and part of this is, well, yes, those are the formal terms. Those are what they are called. Does it help? In this case, not really. It, it kind of complicates which one's dividend. Um, so what this is the we want to name it so it's effective, so it tells us what it is. Um, so it's the number to check, and this is the the number that we want to is a multiple of. So while not proper names as much as I love those I think this is better named because it communicates the intent of what these values are doing in this context these aren't always going to be the correct names but in our context they are so while these two lines look very very similar trying to reduce those actually it's going to complicate things a little bit more it's going to make them a little harder to understand, harder to read. They won't be effective at communicating their intent as well as much. Maybe they will in the future um, as we work through the code and refactor and find more examples. Right now we have two that look the same. That's not always enough to know a general form that will work. So we're almost at 15 minutes and we have completed both our, our we have completed our first three requirements. So we are going to Stop here with some significant refa with some refactoring to improve readability. Always important. So we'll end here, and in the next video we will finish the fourth requirement and complete the TDD of and complete our complete our FizzBuzz by TDD example and video series. Thank you.